Okay, cool. Uh, and we're live. Um, thanks, guys, for, for joining today. Um, the agenda uh, is in the issue number 12 on GitHub uh, in the community repo. Um, so we can just kind of go, go through that. It's a little smaller today than it has been. So I'm, I know Anderson isn't able to make it. He is doing an event um, in Brazil, but I think they're like live streaming EdCon. So um, that's where, where he is today. But I have a report from him that I'll try to pull up later uh, to, to go through. Um, all right, so. Is the agenda in the meeting notes section pushed to the repo? The agenda is in that issue uh, number 12 here. I'll post the link. Uh, oh, okay, it's in the issues. Yeah. Um, where's the chat? Too many different um, video conferencing softwares. I was used to where the chat is in one of the things. And yeah, so. All right, cool. So I just want to start by acknowledging Eswar and Robert for all the contributions this week. Um, I know Eswar had a, a few very, very late nights um, <laughs> on calls with us. And um, yeah, so now thanks to both of them, we have uh, a lot of continuous deployment set up um, for both the D app and the website. And then also Robert uh, has been helping us a lot with the API um, functionality. And so thank you guys both. Uh, a ton for those contributions. It's super valuable, and I know you guys both worked really hard on that. You're welcome. Yes. Cool. We're getting there. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely getting there. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to just uh, highlight is uh, in the issue is that, um, the agenda is that we have. I mean, roughly there's about ten people that that contributed to the project this week. Ten new people. Um, which is incredible. So I just want to highlight that and quickly run through those names um, just because that's really important to us to keep growing. Um, I'm going to try to reach out to all of them also individually and just thank them. Um, so Connor Christie did some testing for us on the DApp side. Uh, Vikas Yadav uh, helped us, is helping us with the welcome screen to the DApp. Zoic One, um, helped us with some uh, loader element on the uh, DApp and some other smaller uh, elements there. Jin Toppy, um, some static site tests uh, for the, the new website. Uh, Brent O'Neill helped us with the advisors page and still helping us with a few other things uh, as well. Uh, Dre Day is helping us with a subscribe form. Johnny Berger uh, has committed a few fixes to the new site. Uh, T. Shoffelin uh, added the meta tags for our social. So now that we have a nice little meta card for the, uh, with our new branding. And then Row2K uh, put a nice little telegram floating pop up on the, uh, the main site. So thanks to everyone uh, um, that contributed this week. And we were, yeah, I'm blown away by how many people have joined us. So that's, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I think the Gitcoin is, uh, is working. <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely uh really i mean it's it's nice to have that kind of firepower to to keep things moving along all right um so Ezwar, do you want to give a status update on the d app next uh, sure uh so yeah so in the d app front like right now uh, so the major priority is to get the uh, whitelist API integrated, which uh, Robert is working on, and uh, like kind of get the alpha release so that people can start using the DApp, whatever functionalities are out there. So once that is done, like I think the next uh, missing piece is to get the uh, issue sorted out for the SIM exchange, like uh, have a proper plan so that we can get the simulator exchange uh, piece also running. So, so yeah, these are like kind of my priorities right now that I'm focusing on. Cool, and I know that you also moved, uh, so just to add to that, I know that you moved everything to continuous deployment, right? So uh, with the D app now, it's deploying to the S3 buckets with um, via Travis, correct? 
yeah yeah so we have uh, like kind of lockdown master like uh, so it's only uh, like we are using only developer like emerging prs since like we have directly set up travis so master is the one which is used for production and develop branch we are using for our dev environment testing where we kind of merge prs and like uh, review all the comments that are there on the develop and once it is stable then only we'll be releasing it to master so that like travis automatically deploys all the changes to s3 buckets and uh, like it's seamless that way not have to worry too much about the devops point of view for this so the same similar setup is kind of set up for the website also static website as well so and also like i have uh, spent some time adding a uh, proper linting uh, predefining the code like so that contributors don't need to worry too much about like kind of the way they code automatically like before they commit um, the tools which are there they kind of uh, smooth uh, predefines the code which is there so so that like they can worry less about handling all this and also it will be easier for me uh, for us to kind of uh, review the commits uh, for the pr awesome yeah thanks for all of that um i think that'll definitely help the pr process for for both of those repos quite a, quite a bit yeah and also they add a lot of code standards as well across both the repos so that is something which was pending long time yeah definitely um cool so just i guess uh give it a quick update on the website obviously it's launched uh, i know we talked about that last week uh i think we got it launched on friday and um we've been migrating dns to route 53 to just make life easier for all of us since we're kind of dependent on aws for so much of our infrastructure at this point um and it seems to be up we've got cloud front distributions for the d app as well as the website now um so that's pretty great load times seem to be reasonable but definitely we're going to try to create some optimization to make things a little bit faster i know a lot of people are accessing it on mobile um so you know that that decreasing load times i think will be be helpful since we have so many people that are looking at it in places where there may not be lte networks as well um all right so from last week i just want to follow up on some of the stuff there uh in the the docs um i can sh i'll just share my screen real quick Um, I added a lot of the information that we talked about to contributing. Um, it still is, needs a lot of work, but I think there's some more information now that is some of what was already in meta um, and then some of what was in community, but really trying to have a nice clean way for people to access it, similar to what we talked about with origin. So that's there. Um, please read it, suggest feedback, changes. Uh, I'm going to continue to try to work on it as we move forward yeah i thought it was helpful bill good yeah i'm glad um i know anderson also had some feedback on it and um i know him as well and uh i believe perfect of all talked about creating like a getting started guide like a really really easy way of understanding the project and some of the pieces and how to uh, get developers onboarded quicker. So um, that I know is also in the works, which is great. I'm excited about that. I think that's some really good feedback and will help uh, will help the process. Yeah, one of the things I'm going to do is um, for the serverless side of things, <clears throat> just um, became clear yesterday as far as trying to work on some of this in in more of an offline matter is uh, a little difficult. Um, and so just to put a how to together to reproduce the steps. So somebody needs to pick up one of these functions and modify it. Someone will be able to do it independently and then be able to effectively just submit a zip file or, or some, some other way. But um, just, just some more um, structure around that, I think, would be helpful. Cool. Yeah, that's, that's great. Definitely. Um, okay, so next thing was the API layer, uh, the market.js library. So I created a repo for that um, and just started outlining some of the very high-level functionality that should be there. Um, I hope in this next week to be able to stub out some of the methods as requested um, and show some of the structure there. 
we have a, I've, I've, two people I've talked to recently that are really excited about working in TypeScript, both uh, Crypto Mental, uh, one of our contributors, and then also someone I spoke to last night who's in the Colorado blockchain community. So um, definitely hope to get that spun up so we can get people contributing to it uh, very soon. Um, and then process improvement opportunities. Let me pull up the email real quick from Anderson. Okay, so he basically was just commenting that, you know, he had spoken with Azwar and Perfect and um, they're going to move forward with the Getting Started Guide. So that'll help with onboarding newcomers. And then he also is planning on helping us um, with the labels that have been, implement been implemented across all the repos. So the, the labels have now been standardized across every repo. Um, which will help, I think, for some consistency. And then he's going to create documentation on what the labels uh, mean, and then also help integrating that into the, the project board as well. So that's what he wanted to report on. Um, then, uh, Robert, do you want to talk about uh, the continuous integration, continuous deployment uh, stuff that you had on the agenda? You know, let, let me push that just simply because of uh, some of the work this week. I didn't really get a chance to put together some of the, some of the work that I wanted to. So um, let's table that for the moment. Cool. So the other, other thing that I wanted to briefly bring up and talk about is some of the SEO um, stuff that we may need to, to think about. Uh, I've done a little digging right now and for sure we're not very searchable. <laughs> Um, some of our competitors or, or other projects, maybe not competitors, but just other projects in the space come up more frequently than we do. Um, and definitely would like to see if anyone has experience with that or thoughts on how we can uh, tackle that issue. Um, and we're Worked on this a little bit from time to time for different places. Patrick, is it breaking up for everyone or just me? Since I can hear you. SEO has gotten quite a bit more complex over the past few years as you know, rank, ranking and search sites have gotten a lot more sophisticated about uh, what, what factors influence high ranking. So to start, I would just suggest uh, reading about, I don't know what the latest uh, ranking engine from Google is, but there, there's actually uh, some papers published that describe what, what factors play and that can help with the optimization if we're gonna do it ourselves. I, I can look those up. You don't look like you heard anything I said, Phil. I think I got like every third word of that. Sorry, I'm, I'm my internet connection. I just I got the unstable alert from Zoom. Um, can you maybe repeat that for me? Uh, the, the main point is that there's some, some uh, white papers that describe what, what factors help a good uh, ranking that I think can drive uh, some of the, the content formatting. The tags aren't, aren't, uh, aren't, don't play a big role much anymore, but uh, I can forward around some pointers on that that may help get us started with the SEO if we're going to do it ourselves. Got it. Does, I mean, is it something you guys think we should take on ourselves or is it better to hire external help with that? I mean, I, I don't really have much experience with it, uh, to be honest. So it's something that I've just recently kind of researched a little bit and looked into. But I mean, if we have expertise to do it in-house, uh, that's awesome. But if we need to hire someone externally, that's, that's fine as well. I just I guess we need to start kind of betting people to, to find a, a provider for that. Are, are you, so, so let me step back and what's the overall goal for market as it relates to SEO and then the broader social media side of things? Yeah. So the, the 
broader social media side of things, I think, is being worked on very well by a lot of our community management people. Um, Collins Brown is kind of uh, one of the other founders is heading that up. And um, Lazar and, and, and Maz are uh, also working hard on, on content creation and, and uh, just kind of getting the information out there. So I think that's going well. Uh, that process is definitely improving and those guys are tackling it head on. But there's really right now, there's no focus on SEO. Um, and I think the goal there, I mean, right now, if you Google decentralized derivatives or Ethereum derivatives, um, things of that nature, we don't, we don't pop up. I think the only searches that are really hitting us are like market protocol, market derivatives, um, you know, things of, of that nature from when I looked at the most recent analytics. So certainly figuring out how to get more visits from searches that we should be coming up with, I think is, is my initial goal there. Okay. Um, so, so there's the, the, there's two sides of it. There's the, the mechanical side of, Hey, we need to do this and you put it into the site and, and, you know, based upon just doing some, some basic analysis, there's, there's some work that needs to be done there, you know, given compressing files and right. So, the mechanics that are really important as well. And so um, I to define how much money you really want to put into it. Um, and, and I've worked with some really, really, really talented folks. Um, and, and that side of it, the analysis, to figure out the keywords and how do you approach it and where do you go to do that is probably, if, you, if, if there's no expertise in house, it's probably best to find someone that knows how to do that, even on a part time basis. Mm -hmm. um, I can, the last individual I worked with, um, he worked at an agency for five years and then worked at Gaia um, for about another five years and just did an absolutely amazing job with the SEO at the company. So I can reach out to him to see if he might have some time or might know of somebody he would recommend and then pass that information on to you. Um, really trust this guy and, he, and, and uh, um, just an amazing job. I, I would love to see him work on this project, but I'm just not sure he has the time. Sure. No, I understand that. Uh, Patrick, do you have any feedback on that? Do you feel like it's something that you have enough expertise to help us with or would you rather us go external for some, uh, some help there? Just the ranking, but I'm not an expert in that area. So if we need to make, uh, really big, big strides and do everything possible. And that, that's, that's really critical to the su success. Then yeah, I can see hiring someone out, outside. Okay. So I missed the first half before critical to a success. Sorry guys. My internet connection today is not, not doing great. Can you mind repeating that for me? Sorry. <clears throat> Sounds like it might be my connection. Um, I think there, there's some pretty well documented, uh, uh, techniques that we can use to, pretty substantially increase the visibility of the site, but I'm not an expert at that. So if it's, it's really critical and needs to be done quickly to the fullest ex extent using maybe some text techniques that, that we're not aware of, then it, it might make sense to, to hire someone. I'll, I'll post some of the things I know and some of the resources I have, and then we can make, we make a call on that. Okay. I mean, I think if, if you have an idea of just laying the groundwork, then if we can do that in house, then we can see where it ends up and uh, if need be, you know, go external and at the same time, you know, I think that having Robert reach out to his friend makes sense too. So maybe we can do those things in parallel, um, you know, knock out the easy stuff and kind of the, the low hanging fruit and hopefully it improves. And uh, maybe we find a longer term kind of, uh, you know, the harder stuff can be done by someone who's got some more experience with it. I think that maybe makes sense as a, as a path forward. Yeah, there's, there's a bunch of block and tackle stuff that I, I, I'm seeing in the issues that, you know, just purely metas and there's a variety of things like that are just like, yeah, got to get that done. But then that's where I ask the question. So if, if you really want to try to rank for certain terms, and you want to you want to put a little little effort behind it, then then it's probably best to find people that are doing this on a daily basis, because um, it is it's the, like Patrick said, the world has changed dramatically uh, over the past five years, just the way it is now. Yeah, no, it's I mean I'm it's very competitive, right? I mean of course everything's very competitive. 
Um, so let's go do that though. I mean, Patrick, if you can help us get some of the, the easy stuff knocked out and uh, then we can kind of go forward and see where we're at and uh, how much of a need we have after that. Um, I mean, it's not, you know, we don't need to compete with people that are Googling for the CME and don't, <laughs> don't find us, but uh, I think there's some keywords that, that would be nice if we came up uh, and not even necessarily first, just on the page. So um, let's see where we end up after some internal work. It's awesome. Cool. Um, all right. So that's, that's really all uh, I had to talk about specifically this, this week. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely focused on documentation and some of the process stuff as well as um, trying to incorporate a lot of the new contributors and um, working on, on with Anderson trying to uh, foster a better environment for contribution and making sure we're really welcoming people into the community. Um, so that's something that I'm trying to focus on this week. Um, so yeah, I'd love to kind of hear what you guys are, are planning on knocking out and working on and, um, any other discussion that, you know, we have some time left to talk about whatever's on your minds. So I'm going to continue working on the whitelist. I'm hoping there is a bit of promise hell in that code. Um, just needs to be cleaned up. Um, the, the, the intent is I think honorable. Um, and, and once that's done, I'll, I'll have you guys unblocked. I'm hoping to get that done today. I've got a mid midday, uh, uh, appointment, but if I don't get it done this morning, I'll get it done this afternoon and get that done. So then the remaining tasks on that are pretty straightforward and kind of remove me from the critical path. So that'll be the good news there. And then after that, just kind of, I'll circle back around with you to see, um, what's kind of the next priority and then, uh, figure out what to take a stab at. Awesome. That sounds great. Thanks so much for your work there. So if there's anything I can do to help with DevOps or some of these things that, uh, potentially with the AWS DevOps stuff, I can, I can help with that. sounds like we might be merging the, uh, the meta repo before we propagate um, all the guidelines into the other repos. I, I think that makes sense given how the community repo has, has come along and we could just leave meta for really uh, cross project automation and orchestration if, if and when we need to do that. That sounds good. So yeah, I, I, Anderson was kind of asking me yesterday if there's really a need to have both community and meta. Um, and I don't know that meta stands on, a, on its own right now with, you know, and a lot of that stuff can, is, is there's overlap. So um, he's thinking that he's going to merge the two um, and, and just keep community essentially. And then, you know, if, if the need arise for meta again, um, then maybe, you know, like you said, re, you know, keep rebreathing life into it at that point may make some sense. Um, so yeah, I think one thing Patrick with the DevOps stuff, um, soon is that once this kind of flurry of activity and just get stuff done mentality is done with some of the setup, I, I really would love some of your expertise with, uh, locking down the roles. Um, right now it's a little, yeah, anyways, I'll, I'll leave it there since we're alive, <laughs> but, uh, we probably need to work on that a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay, cool. Thanks. Um, and then also the, yeah, obviously the, the SEO stuff that we just talked about. If, if you're, yep. you have some time for that, that'd be great. As well, do you have anything you want to talk about uh, before we wrap up? Uh, yeah. So like, uh, what is the plan for market.js for now? Like, I don't think we have actually covered that part, right? Yeah, so my path forward there, my plan there is to uh, just get some structure in place to allow people to start contributing. So um, probably just creating just even directory structure, uh, some of the first uh, functions. And, and again, maybe I'm just going to stub them out for the time being. Excuse me. Um, and so that's, that's the plan this week with that. Um, and gradually kind of bringing more contributors on to that repo to start working on it in parallel. I think the, the path forward on it actually, to me at least is pretty 
clear um, because a lot of like the a lot of our partners are already using Xerox.js uh, for their decentralized exchanges and allowing them to access a very similar API is important. So, uh, you know, we kind of have a roadmap with Xerox.js of what they're expecting, what they're looking for. So a lot of the structure is going to be um, duplicated from, from that existing library. So yeah, apart from that, nothing else from my end. I think you covered pretty much everything. Cool. Um, yeah, I really appreciate everyone joining the, the, the call today. Uh, I think there's a lot of progress made this week. So um, I mean, hats off to, to everyone. It's, it's incredible. Really happy about that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess we'll we'll end on time. That's awesome. Thirty minutes. <laughs> Incredible. Knocked it all out. Um, yeah. All right. Well, guys, thanks a lot for joining us this week, and um, yeah, look forward to talking again next week. See you guys later. Yeah. See you guys. Bye.